Hi everybody, welcome back to the weekly forecast. I'm Pixar T. This will be the weekly forecast for October 4th through October 10th. I'm gonna do my weekly forecast a little bit differently than I have the past couple weeks. Instead of going day by day, I'm gonna just give you this week's themes to look out for. Uh, but we have a big week, one of the bigger weeks of the month, so let's get to it. Starting with the new moon in Libra on October 6th. It's the dark moon, a seed is being planted for the next two weeks, a new beginning, a new beginning around dynamics in relationships, uh, looking at codependency versus interdependency, uh, looking at autonomy, independence. And so whatever seeds are planted for the new moon will come to fruition in about two weeks. Um, Leo and Cancer are going to need extra rest during the new moon. Libra is going to feel a new beginning with their identity, possibly with their body. Aries is going to feel a new beginning with their relationships or their relations. Capricorn's going to feel a new beginning with their vocation, with their praxis. And Cancer is going to feel a new beginning with their home life, with their roots, with their property. But overall, it's a new beginning for everybody. It's a good time to rest, a good time to manifest, plant seeds. So that's what we have for the new moon. And then also we have Pluto stationing direct this week on the 6th. Um, we have a big shift in power dynamics coming. Pluto is a slower planet, so we may feel this more in the background of our lives, but Capricorn and Cancer might feel this a little more intensely or viscerally, especially if you have planets or points at the end degrees of the cardinal signs. But overall, power dynamics, control dynamics are highlighted. And pay attention to the authority figures in your life and just be aware of these dynamics that are coming up when Pluto stations direct. And then on October 7th this week, Venus enters Sagittarius. So Venus is leaving its detriment in Scorpio. So it's gaining some dignity when it moves into Sagittarius. We will, we will all see um, a boost in our pleasure, in our enjoyment, in our creativity, our art, our romance, love, relationships. Venus gets a big boost when it moves into Sagittarius. Uh, Taurus, Libra, and Sagittarius will all feel a blessing coming through, hopefully around the seventh, around this week. Um, maybe a helpful woman comes into your life, Venus. Maybe you enjoy some travel or education or something that expands your mind in some way, Sagittarius. So we have that to look forward to, Venus leaving its detriment, gaining some dignity. And we also have Mars going through its Kazemi around the same time. So this whole week, Mars will be combust the sun, which means that it's very close to the sun and burning up. Mars is going through its death and rebirth. We're gonna have a renewal with our energy levels. So our energy levels may be erratic. We may be having lower vitality, maybe feeling tired or burnt out, maybe feeling lazy or needing like we need rest more, maybe feeling impatient or sick of everyone's shit. Remember your grounding tools around this time with your energy levels. It's best if you can rest and take it easy or expel this energy with physical exercise or whatever you do to expel your energy. Scorpio, Aries, and Libra are gonna feel the most frazzled around this time. But overall, we will all be coming out of this feeling more refreshed and renewed with newer energy levels, realizing that we can't keep going the way that we have been going and coming up with a new way to move forward. The other thing about Mars Kazemi is that there is some sort of blessing that comes through when Mars conjoins the sun to the exact degree. So there may be some sort of blessing amidst all of the burnout. So keep your eye open for that. And this week around October 9th, Mercury goes through its Kazemi as well. So all week, not only do we have a retrograde Mercury, but we do have a combust Mercury. So there may be issues with communication, with technology, with travel, the normal Mercury retrograde combustion things, but it may be a little more intense or a little more constant than we're used to. Amidst the combustion, amidst the burnout, um, there is some blessing because again, Mercury will be touching the heart of the sun, going through its Kazemi, and whenever a planet touches the heart of the sun, there's some sort of renewal, some sort of blessing. Gemini and Virgo and Libra will be feeling this the most intensely. Libra's going through a lot this week, so keep your grounding tools ready. 
Uh, maybe try journaling, whatever you do to organize your mind, organize your thoughts, maybe meditating, maybe movement through meditating, maybe doing puzzles. <laughs> I did a puzzle last night. It helped me sleep felt really good because also Mercury conjoins Mars. So the planet of communication meets up with the planet of war. Sharp tongues are heightened this week. Being detailed might come a bit easier. This is a good time to investigate or do a lot of research to apply this energy towards. It may come with explosive conversations or passive aggression, which overall may be good and necessary to get out, but it may not be productive. It may be emotional or extra high energy or anxious. It may be a good idea to move your body again um, around this day or around this week if you can be more physically active to remediate all of this energy or maybe journaling more, uh, meditating more, doing more art, whatever you need to do to ground. Also around the same time, Venus conjoins the south node. So while Venus gains dignity by leaving Scorpio and entering Sagittarius, it is a conjoining the south node, which can make us feel a little down in the dumps, maybe feeling a bit of grief, maybe having to let go of something. At the same time, we could come into contact with people or objects or ideas or things from the past that we feel deeply connected to, possibly past life related. Taurus and Libra especially may be feeling like they have low vitality while the moon touches the south node. When I'm talking about it coming into contact with old things, this could mean old friends, old family members. It could be um, old philosophies like yoga or astrology. It could be antiques. So this is a good day for us all to take it easy if possible. At least be extra gentle with yourself. Uh, try not to push yourself too hard this week. And the last aspect I have for this week is October 10th, Saturn stations direct. So all week, Saturn will be moving very, very slowly, slowing down to come to a halt in order to change direction and move forward again. There may be something that we're dealing with that is dragging out, but be patient. Uh, Saturn is shifting gears now and starting to go in the right direction. So all of us are gonna start to feel a shift in the right direction for a system that has been implemented and updated while Saturn was retrograding for the past few months. Aquarius and Capricorn are gonna start to feel more like themselves, feeling like they have a leg up, and those houses in our chart will slowly start to chug forward in some way. So if you feel like things have been moving slowly in your Aquarius or Capricorn house or with a system you've been trying to implement for the past couple months, there should be some sort of blessing and shift when Saturn stations direct on the 10th that can help you start moving in the right direction over the coming months, slowly but surely. So that's what I have for this week. We have some intense themes, so I hope you can keep your grounding tools ready. I hope that you can rest or take it easy, or at least remember to be extra gentle with yourself this week. Please comment below and let me know what you have planned. I would love to hear from you. Good luck to everybody, and I will see you next week. Bye.